three more germs just died. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go to Luke 6, 27. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Have you found it yet? If not, just look on your neighbor or look at the screen. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. And him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic. And it says, give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing to return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Father, we're asking for the power of the Holy Spirit to make alive this word and bring it to our reality so we can live it out and walk in the freedom it provides in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. All of us are called to imitate God. It says, imitate God. Ephesians 5, 1, imitate God, follow God. We are called... Uh, to follow Jesus. And by the way, sometimes we think this is an option. To love or not to love. You know what? I just don't feel like loving that person. They're flaky. All my enemies, I love my enemies like I like jam on the edge of my knife. <laughs> you have to understand that God sets this up. It's, this is from heaven to us. It's a command, not an option. Because if you're going to walk the way, and Jesus said it's a narrow way and it's a difficult way. He, he warned you. If you're going to come after me, it's narrow and it's not easy. You know what's not easy? It's not easy on your flesh. But there's only one way to life and life more abundantly, and that's the life of love. And with the hatred flying around out here, you got to be so careful you don't get sucked into the sulfur pit of hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, and being vengeful. You can't go there. The world is full of it. They let their mouths fly. And I'm telling you, that's not the plan of God for, every, for any believer. The believer must understand they're called to a higher walk. And if you want to miss the missiles of this life and all the things the devil's shooting at you, if you want to be in that secret place, if you want to live above and not beneath, you must walk the walk of love. And as he said, you get no points for loving those who love you. Well, I love my wife. Well, she loves you most of the time. I love my children. Well, they love you. There's nothing in that. You know, when we hug each other, I love you, I love you all. That's like, you can I tell you what? That's like pumping iron with 10-pound stick. Nothing much will happen. You won't grow. But brother, but brother and sister, you want 100, 200 pounds pushing that in the spirit? Start loving those who don't love you. woo -hoo. Start loving. That separates the men from the boys. The Sunday schoolers with their pins to real men and women of God. They're saying, okay, I'm going to turn into a love warrior. I'm going to love my enemies. He says, love your enemies. How many know the flesh, though? The flesh, that's not how we respond. The flesh wants retribution. The flesh wants retaliation. 
the fresh ones, payback. Come on now. Have you ever felt, I mean, we all haven't had it. You, if you're bad to me, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, people do all kinds of things. Here, you have this cup of coffee. I, I, I saw this cup. Someone actually made a cup of coffee. And on the bottom, it says, it says you have been poisoned. You, mean you, you know, you're drinking this. You go, and then finally you read, what's that? I've been poisoned. <laughs> Payback. People want payback. And so Romans 8, 6, to be carnally mind is death, but to be spiritually mind is life and peace. we got to let your spirit, we've got to walk by the spirit and let it control the flesh. And it has to, and, the, and when it comes to enemies, I'm telling you, that's the dividing line. And we've got to go there. We've got to go there. So we cannot allow hatred towards our enemies. But we've got to understand that our spirit man, now first of all, I'll just say this. You cannot love your enemies without divine love. Impossible. The new creature has been born again and divine love has been poured out. The Bible says, the, in Romans 5, 5, God's love has been poured out upon us. Passion Bible says it casc it, the love of God has been cascading into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's like a waterfall. You been to a waterfall? Has anybody seen a waterfall? Three or four people. You need to get out more. But anyway, <laughs> definitely need to, you need to get out more. You need to get out. We used to have, uh, in Africa, our swimming was in rivers. And uh, I'm trying to think of the place. It was you know, like a typical Tarzan place. We had, we would, uh, it had rocks and boulders and vines and was in the gorge. And there was this beautiful waterfall with this. And it would be covered in kids. We would be climbing the vines only in Africa. Getting way up high and then jumping. And they had a waterfall. You get under the waterfall. A waterfall just is it's like this gallons and gallons and gallons of water hitting you at the same time. And that's what God says. I've got the love flowing out of you. Here's what it says. You can do this. You can't do it in the flesh. You've got to kick over in the spirit. But you can do this. You say, well, it's, it's hard. I know. But you can do it. It takes practice. There's a little bit of work, but you can grow the fruit of love on the inside of you. And so loving our enemies, the Bible says, Jesus said, there's a great reward for it. If you want to live a blessed life, if you want to live a healthy life, if you want to live a life of peace, if you want to keep joy in your heart, if you don't want oppression, depression, sadness, then you've got to learn to walk this road. It's a command. No matter what happens out there, the command is... Love your enemies. Amen. Love your enemies. Jesus teaches us to love them. And looked up the word enemy. It's, it's, an enemy is one who hates you or has evil designs against you. An enemy is one who opposes you, who is hostile to you. You know, that could be happening for, in your family for a while. How many, how many had some, your hostility has been even in your own home? Amen. Within your own home. You know, you don't have to look at it. I think some of the enemy is always outside. Oh, it can get real close. <laughs> when you're sleeping by yourself, you know you've had a temporary setback and you have an enemy in the house. You may be the enemy. <laughs> but it's very real. But, but the Bible has answers for it. God, the Bible says God loves his enemies. God loves his enemies. He causes rain to shine on the just and the unjust. God is an equal opportunity lover. He loves every human the same way. He, you know, can you believe that God loved Hitler? He loved Stalin? If they had repented, they could have turned their whole thing around. But they didn't. Stalin's in hell right next to Hitler. Because if you miss Jesus, you miss it all. I'm going to be more blunt next time. I remember I had a pack of New Agers. I was doing a funeral, and I mentioned hell one time. And a pack of New Agers accosted me in the uh, lobby. And they were telling me how wrong it was to talk about hell. And that it's, it's, it, this is part of the whole religious, uh, you know, legalism that creates a hardship on people. Don't talk about hell. And I remember being soft and kind and listening. And let me just share. You know what? I'm going to not be this way. I'm gonna, I'm not, next, next time, I wish I had a replay. 
No, I'm not going to do that. No, no, let me tell you about hell. H-E-L-L. Hell. Hell. Yes. There is a hell. There is a hell. <clears throat> I'm going to bring people who have gone to hell to this church. I'm, I feel like i got to scare the hell out of people. I'm bringing hell people <laughs> that have been to hell. I'm going, to, I'm going to line them up. I'm going to have one after another. Because in the world, especially in the soy latte drinking barstool type preaching, we, not mentioned, we don't mention hell. But hell is real. Where is it? Down below you. How fast does it take to get, you, get there? Your heart stops. Within a minute, you're there. You go straight down. Am I doing okay with my time? Just check it. And so we got to understand that hell is real. And you go there if you're not connected to Jesus Christ. And that's the most loving thing you can ever tell somebody. But God's love is real. God says to you and I, I want you to love like I loved you. Because at one time, you and I were enemies of God. Romans 5, 10 says that while we're still enemies, he reconciled us through the Son, Jesus Christ. We were enemies of God. But God, can you believe this? That even though we're enemies, God still said, Ephesians 1, 3, that he blesses us with all spiritual blessings. Every believer, I mean, every person on the whole world has been blessed with spiritual blessings. But you've got to get it through Jesus Christ. So God says to you, I don't, care if you're, I don't care if you're an enemy, I'm going to still love you. And I'm asking you to do the same. You're called to love like God. And this Jesus, I'm telling you, he says if you love them, you've got to love them like I love them. And so he says four things. Number one, look here, he says, love your enemies. Everybody say, love your enemies. Amen. you got to love them. Now, I don't know about you, but you cannot love those you cannot forgive. You've got to love them. Next service, I want to have that on the screen if I can. I want to have those four things. I gave it to Dawn a long time ago, but she knows she can find them. Love your enemies. That means you've got to treat them well. Treat them well. That means, remember me, I mean, you remember the one I told you about? I had a minister come attack me last Sunday. I'm preparing this service. And I get a text. Do you think that everything is so la da in ministry world? <laughs> but, uh, and I said, Lord, this is amazing. I'm preaching on loving your enemy. This man just turned into an enemy. I said, it's, this is hilarious. I put, down, I put my hand on the phone and I, and I prayed for him, forgave him, loosed the power of God in Jesus' name. Now, my phone's been dead. I was on vacation for a week. My phone's dead for a week. Don't get salt water on your iPhone. It will die. I don't care what they say. It's, uh, no, it's moisture resistant. That's a lie. One drop of water, it does something to it. But, you know, but to get text back, hey, he goes on and on. I said, you know, I, I, you know what? It's so changed me because I've been praying for him. It's not a, that dart has been pulled out. And I love him, and it's going to be great. I'll call him later this week. You know what? Hallelujah. Okay. Whatever. Jesus' name. But I'm going to love you. And I'm praying for you. And I'm praying your blessing in Jesus' name. But you've got to love him. Then the Bible says, what's it, what, what, what does it say here? Then you've got, to do, you've got to do good to them. You've got to do good to them. That means you've got to do something wonderful for them. You've got to think, of, I don't want to do something wonderful for them. I don't like them. My ex, I can't stand my ex. Do you know what they've done? People will talk to me. Do you know what they've done? They will go on and on for 20 minutes. And then they did this. And then they did this. And you know what else they did? They put tacks underneath my tire. When I pulled out, I had two flats. And then you know what else they did? You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to win me over. They want me to hate them like they hate them. Oh, yeah. That guy's a slug. He should be, oh, my gosh, he should be removed from the planet. It's amazing. I get two couples and they begin talking. And they just have, I said, can I blow a whistle? <clears throat> Why did you marry them? What lying devil jumped on you? Can you tell me something good about them? One thing. Let me think. Uh, 
And they'll come up and it's like birthing 10-pound babies. This one. I'll write that down. Can you come up with another one? This one. I'll write that down. And then the babies get small. As I come up, I'll, I'll write down five things. So, so actually, actually, he's a good provider. He has a job. Ladies, just a man with a job is a blessing. Especially if the wife is in the medical field. For some reason, if a wife is a nurse, for the man automatically turns into a couch potato. You got to love it. Listen, and he's loving. Does he take care of the kids? Yes, does he, take care the, he takes care of the kids. Does he take out the trash? He takes out the trash. There's a lot of things. Oh, that's a minor, you say. But, yeah, but does the man say, well, what, well, what's really upsetting you? He's at work all the time. Now, let me just think this through. <laughs> Thank God he's at work. And he needs to learn to back down and focus more on you. But that's a trainable effect. You can, you can train him. Do, you know what, wife? Maybe if you do good to them, in spite of everything they say, just do good to them. Brother Hagin one time told this woman, said, my husband won't go to church. He's meaner than a snake. He's always running me down. And I keep asking him. She, and Brother Hagin said, quit hounding him. Just love him. And don't say anything negative again. She says the hardest thing she ever did. She said, she started cooking for him meals. And not with poison. Just cooked them. She kept the antifreeze in the antifreeze container in the garage. But she said, here, eat this. She said, you know what? I just started doing everything and I said nothing. I went to church without saying nothing. I kept blessing him. And he said, several weeks went by. The husband said, are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine, honey. You know, sometimes it takes practice. And the Bible says there's a work to this thing. It's a work. It's not easy. But you can train your flesh. And he said, finally, the husband said, I'm going to church with you today. That's when she nearly fell out. He said, what? I'm going to church with you. And he went to church, gave his life to Christ. He was won by the love. Out of 1 Peter 3, it, the Bible gives the formula. The Bible, he says, you will win your husband with your chaste behavior and demeanor. There's no weapon against love. And he says, when you see, God is showing us how to turn enemies into friends. Because, because really, this is what Jesus, he operated in this kind of way. You got to do good to people. You got to do good to your enemies. Everybody say, do good to my enemy. And then he starts to stop there. He keeps on going. Not only do good to them, but bless them. Bless them. But to bless somebody, you got to speak well of them. You got to pray for their, Lord, I pray they'll be happy today. I pray, I pray. And I sometimes I had to pray, it's been not easy. In the name of Jesus, bless them, Lord. Fill, fill, fill them with prosperity. And your flesh says, don't say that. You don't want to do that. You want to slap them. No, no. Bless them. Everybody say, love them. Love them. Do good to them. Bless them. bless them. Is that enough? No, he's got another one. Pray for them. Oh, that's over the top. Pray for them. I got to put it on a list. I got to pray for them. I've got to pray. Listen what. I've got to pray. I've got to pray that, Lord, that I want to accept if they've mistreated me, they've harassed me, I accept it as my mission in life to pray a blessing for them. Do you ever think about this, that demons cause people to act like they do? And if someone doesn't pray for them, they can keep acting the way they do. Amen. Because people pray for them. They pray for them. God turns it around. Amen. I'm very much aware when I lead someone to Christ, someone's been praying for them. The man who's going to cut down my trees, they're talking to him, nice guy. They're part of this company. It's the biggest tree service in Atlanta. They have 11 crews and they're like three months out. I said, what? He said, and, he's a, and he was an arborist and we got to talking. 
And I just said, listen, have you found, have, have, you, have you found Jesus? Are you still looking for him? He said, I'm, I'm still looking for him. But to make a long story short, I had an opportunity to lead that man to Christ. Because his wife was saved, his kids were saved. He'd, he'd go to church where he says, I go to church when she wants me to. But I don't, you know, when I go, I just, just go just to placate her. But he received Christ. I said, you tell your wife her prayers were answered because she kept loving you in all of this. And I've, I've got his card. I'm following up with him. In fact, he's still got to do my tree service. He can't do it until he's truly saved. That's just a joke. <laughs> Please kneel by the stump while we solidify the deal. But loving those, you've got to love your enemies. You've got to love them. And you cannot... And I want to go back to Romans chapter 12, Romans 12, where we talked about this. He says, he said, listen, repay no one, verse 17, evil for evil. Beloved, verse 19, don't avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I'll repay, says the Lord. If your enemy is hungry, what do I, what do, I do for him? Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you'll heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You know what? Love is kind to people. I remember one time we were getting the 275 property. And the people behind us won't mention the subdivision. The head of the HOA came against us. And he met me face to face in City Hall. He said, you're a liar. Man, I've never been hit like that. No, I was showing, no, sir. I'm, and I said, no, you're a liar. I felt like breaking his finger off. Let me do it one more time. <laughs> but I'm the pastor. And so he stirred everything up. Then he had five subdivisions all stirred up against us. All of them. I talked to the mayor at the time. He said, this, this is not looking good. So we went to prayer. We started praying. You pray for your enemies. You pray for your enemies. We started praying and blessing. Then we had the big meeting. And I had like 120 of our people show up. The opposition had 12. We were being nice. They shelved it. They said, we don't want to discuss it now. But one thing led to another. We met in the fellowship hall. All of the antagonistics and usance, and we got to dialogue. And we could just tell, you know, we weren't unruly, we weren't unkind, we just kept showing kindness. And we just kept showing love. You know what? It pays to walk in love. We didn't hire an attorney, we did nothing but walk in love. Make a long story short. We received complete acceptance by the city. And the man who came against us, it's dangerous to come against the house of God. It's not healthy. Does that make sense? But but if but you gotta do your part of loving. God says, I will remember this? God says, I will be the one taking care of business. So the head of HOA, next thing you know, he gets an altercation with his neighbor and punches him. Next thing you know, he's wearing orange pajamas in the Roswell jail. Well, next thing you know, he's no longer the HOA. Next thing you know, there's another HOA president that thinks we hung the moon. But you know what? Now listen, listen, watch this. But I met that former guy at a restaurant and we met. And we could talk. And he just shared how he's an atheist. And he shared how he's a Marine. And he went around the world and he saw the things I saw, what God did. I said, sir, let me explain. I want to talk to you. God did not do that. Amen. It's Satan doing it. The one you're blaming God for is the one who only loves people and blesses people. He was the one that perpetrated that. He said, sir, and you know what? We exchanged cards. And I said, listen, I'd like to get together and just talk about the things of God. He said, okay. You know what? God will turn your enemies into your friends. But if you walk in love, and he will fight for you. See, the Lord says, I will fight for you. You'll hold your peace, Exodus 14, 14. God, let me tell you what. When you walk in love, 
you free God and the angels to do a work on those who are against you. But if you're bitter and you're vengeful and you run your mouth, then God sits back and so do the angels. It's, just, it's, it's on you. And you know in any lawsuit, you know who's making the money? The attorneys. Yeah, just keep on suing. No, the Bible says make a settlement as quick as you can. If you can. Are you out there still? So the Bible says don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How do I overcome evil with good? How do I come, how do I overcome evil with good? I've got to be good. I've got to be constantly walking. Listen what, I'm going to walk in love. I'm, 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 I'm just going to just be kind. I'm just going to be good to people in Jesus' name. And when you do that, the Bible says you can overcome every wicked attack by walking in the love of God. And the first Peter, if you go there, first Peter 3. First Peter 3. Let the water of God wash over you in Jesus' name. It says, finally, all of you, one mind, have compassion one for another. Because love is, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, which means to be humble. Not returning evil for evil or, or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Knowing that you are called to this, so that you may inherit a blessing. For he would love life and see good days, days, then refrain his tongue from evil, his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, but his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them who do evil. Wow. We're called to be, inherit a blessing. Inherit a blessing. Do you mean to tell me God says, I want something good for to come to you in Jesus' name? Do you know what? There's something about when you are blessing people in the midst of them coming against you. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 20 and 21. It says, listen, if your heart condemns you, he talks about the, if your heart condemns you, God's greater than your heart. But if your heart does not condemn you, then you have confidence with God. There's something about this walking in love that impacts your faith because Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. When you walk out to love enemies and you just say, God, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to move in a, in a way of uh, a, just of pure love towards them and speak well of them. I tell you, God will pour out his anointing on you to do what you're called to do and he will pour a blessing on you. The blessings of God follow his obedience, follow your obedience. The blessings of God. And so God has that for you. And he says, there's a great reward. You'll be the sons of the Most High. You'll be like me. We'll talk about that in a minute, about the rewards of God. There'll be a great reward when you love like he loves. But the key to living a life of blessing, if you pick one key, what's the key? Love your enemies. The key, love your enemies. The key, love your enemies. That is the key to the blessing of God. Love those who come against you. Love those who even might sue you. Oh, I've been sued by several. I've been sued by the best. And you know what? The Bible has it. Love your, love your enemies. Don't retaliate. It says here, you would love life. And see good days. Now, God began dealing with me personally. Never read the scriptures. I know that. You just know the first layer. There's 10,000 layers below that. It's the cursory reading that messes us up. You become religious. There's a meaning behind it. And the Lord's going to speak to me. My own personal. Because I think I live, a, I'm very careful. But the Bible talks about the sins of the mouth. Speaking evil. And we might not even come up. We might just, here's the sin. We won't, I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what the other guy said. We got to be so, so careful in our walk with God. And the older you are in God, the higher the standards on you. This is a big deal with God, your mouth. What you say out of your mouth about other people affects your life. Galatians 6, 7, God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, Christian, non-Christian. We sometimes take love lightly 
and we take it like it's an option. We don't treat it like it is. It's a command. It's the only way to life. <laughs> it's the only way you get blessed. It's the only way that you can live. You've got to make a decision in Jesus' name. And the Bible says only by pride comes contention. If there's contention, the Bible says the only way it comes is through pride. Someone is proud and says, no, I'm right. So we've got to be very careful. God began to seek, speak to me about taking it to another level, my own personal self, about not repeating anything. I'm just repeating it. Don't repeat it. If you repeat it, it's tantamount for you saying it. It's like you originated it. Then he says, seek peace and pursue it. Now, now that's a big thing to me, I'm talking about relationships. He didn't say just don't desire the relationship to be at peace. Ah, well, I would. It'd, be, it'd be great if we could make up. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be great if we made right. No, it says seek it, and then it says pursue it. So he puts the burden on you to make it right with them as much as within you. I'm telling you, this is a big deal with God. This thing about loving enemies is huge. And we have to make a difference how we walk than the rest of the world walks. So we cannot say things and speak things that bring other people down or disparage other people, including political leaders. Well, I have a right because they're wrong. Let me just do this. Let me just, let me just tell you what. If we don't listen to this, the devil will tear churches up. If we don't do this, it'll divide us. If we don't do this, I'm telling you what, if we don't follow the standard and still have the anointing of God, the anointing will lift. But I'm determined as for me and my house, we're going to do this in Jesus' name. We're going to pursue relationships. Pursue it. Go after it. And make it right in Jesus' name. It's not easy out there, is it? And so... The rewards are many. Luke 6, 35. There's a great reward. The Amplified says, rich, strong, intense, and abundant. Rich, strong, intense, and abundant. There is a reward. Everybody say, there's a reward. There is a reward. Hallelujah. It says, listen, number one. He says, listen. He said, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. Now that tells me the way I handle my enemies impacts how God answers prayer. Wow. You know, I was backing out of my driveway just yesterday. I have a video thing where if you push, if you're in drive, I mean, if you're, if you're stopped, you push the parking brake, the video pops up. Other than that, you just hear, hear the audio. So I've been pushing the brake, listen, you know, stop to stop. It's kind of nice in a way. Instead of sitting at the dumb light doing nothing, you can see something. So I left the house. I mean, when I parked it the other day, I pushed the brake down. I was watching, and I just got out. So I'm backing out the next day, forgetting the parking brakes on. They're not, not paying attention. I said, what's wrong with this car? It's kind of slow. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like not all there. And then I realized I had the parking brake on. Do you realize that our love walk is like a parking brake? It's, or like we can apply the parking brake. It's still moving. The car was still moving, but not at the mobility it should be. You still get some prayers answered, but not to the level they could be. Because it's based on your love walk. It's based on what you say out of your mouth. You say something out of your mouth that's contrary, you put the brake on. Now the prayer is not coming quite as fast as it could have happened. The benefit is, when you love your enemies, God has got his ear open to you. He'll answer prayers. He's ready to answer your prayer. That's, this is a big deal, folks. A big deal, especially because the devil, what he likes to do is stir things up, get you involved in the stir up so he can shut down the blessing of God for you. Because if you get connected into, this, into, into the hatred talk and divisiveness, then he's slowing down the blessing on your life. You're going to say, no, no, not to me, devil. I'm missing that bullet. I'm going to walk in love no matter what I am, no matter where my political persuasions are, no matter what I think about somebody else, I'm going to walk in love. Above all, I'm going to love them in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says his, his eyes are on the righteous. What's, who are the righteous? The ones that do right. But what part is doing right? Loving your enemies. Loving those who don't love you. Hallelujah. You're still out there. And, you're, but, and then the Bible says, 
he, he, will, he will, I'm, I'm going to flip it around. He says his, his to face the Lord is against those who do evil. Well, that means if I do right, then his face is towards me. If God's face is towards me, I have his favor. I have his favor. But if God's face is against me, one translation says God will turn his back on you. But I'm a saved person. I'm telling you, it can be like God's not listening to you. I didn't write this. This is in the B-I-B-L-E. And so he says, if you want to, you see, you've got to, here's what we got to do. The Bible says, 1 John 4, 16. We've got to know and believe. We've got to not only know, but we've got to believe. We've got to believe that the love of God is the most powerful force on the earth. You have to believe that the love of God can turn darkness to light. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe that when I love the unlovely, then God's face is shining towards me. That means I've got God's favor. I've got God's grace. God is pushing for me and pulling for me because I'm operating under his plan. You know what? I have found this. When things have happened to me in church, I've had a lot of people sometimes come against me. I found if I walk in love, just, just pray, pray, pray. Seek God. Bless, bless, bless. Supernatural miracles start coming to me. Bam, 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 bam. All the answers come around and I'm delivered. People look at me, how did that happen? It was the supernatural power of God. But if I'd gotten bitter, if I'd gotten, if I got my running my mouth, this thing about running my mouth, God's been speaking to me so strong. We've got to have, and I'm very careful. But I'm going to be even more careful. I'm taking another level. Well, someone so said that. No, if you repeat, if you repeat something, it's tantamount you just originated it. If you repeat it, that's why the Bible says love covers all things. Love does not repeat. But what did they do? You don't want to know. I'll leave it with God. Amen. And then the Bible says it'll affect your, uh, uh, your um, spiritual vit vitality. Why is that? Do you know what? When you love your enemies, you get to release all grudges, all unforgiveness, all burdens, all brokenheartedness, all sorrow, all sadness. Hallelujah. You get to be, woo, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. The Bible says, James 1.25, he who looks to the perfect law of liberty. I love those words. The perfect law of liberty. It's a perfect law. It's a law of freedom. What's he talking about? The word of God. That if you love your enemies, you do good to them. You pray for them. You bless them. If you... He says, if you continue in it and be not a forgetful hearer, don't be looking in the mirror, then you forget what you look like. No, don't be, don't be a forgetful hearer. But, but listen, I love this. But be a doer of the work. It's amazing how we replace work for word. Because further up on the verse 22, he says, be a doer of the word. But, he, but this one, he says, doer of the work. How many know when you do the word, it's work? When you love the unlovely, it is not easy. It is work. When people constantly snub you, I mean, our families are wonderful, the family of God, but you are constantly having to sometimes work at loving other people because they're always making demands, always overstepping, always saying something they shouldn't say, and it's just sometimes it's not easy how we know what I'm talking about. Some people are easy to be with, and some people are love growth machines. You get around them. Start pumping the iron because here we go again. How do we know what I'm talking about? Amen. You've got to understand that the God requires it of us. It's work. If you do the work, part of the work is if you say something that's wrong, repent right there, back it off, nullify it. Don't allow your mouth. And 90% of it, it's our mouth. Our mouth. You sow this seed, seed. You just sold some bad seed. You just sowed something that will come back and get you. A little deceptive because we don't relate that sickness to that seed. Relate that loss to that seed. Relate that pain to that seed. Because the Bible says if you want to see good life, which goes on another benefit. 
It will bring healing to your body. Health to your body. Health to your B-O-D-Y. Sometimes you have to question, what have I sowed? I'm not saying it's everything. But we treat the word far too glibly. We treat church way too lightly. You recognize everything you say and do has a consequence to your future. But if you look at the perfect law of, of, of liberty, here's another benefit. It's a law of liberty. It's a law of freedom. When you do it, it's a law of freedom. You're free of living your life tore up from the floor up. You're free from broken hardness. You're free from sorrow. You're free from sadness. And what you have in its place, you have joy. Hallelujah. Joy. We've got to be constantly walking this out and hearing it over and over again. Well, I know. No, 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 no. You think you know it. But you're too glib with it. The Bible promises us long life. Psalm 91, 16. With long life will I satisfy him. You can't have long life just you've got a healthy body. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That the blessings of God are for every believer. And this wonderful scripture in 1 Peter 3 is telling us how to get it. You want a good life? You want prosperity? You want fulfillment? then you need to understand that this walking in love is not an option. It's a command. And he says, you, and you need to learn to love those who don't love you, your enemy. But you know what? It's our choice. The choice is, am I going to love my enemy or not? Some of you young people, it means loving your mom and dad. Well, they don't know anything. No, no, no. Love your mom and dad. No, you know what they've done to me. They withheld my pocket money. And my room is still a mess. No, no, love them. I tell you this, you learn it early. You learn it early. God will bless your life. Supernaturally. Who wants to see good days? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we want to love life. We want to have a fulfilling life. We don't want to have a life that's strained. We want to have a life that's full of freedom and joy. We thank you, Lord. There's a blessing. There's a reward. We can get to inherit a blessing. Health and healing can be ours. Peace of heart. Joy in the spirit. Fulfillment in all that we do. Success and prosperity in whatever our hand touches because we have the favor of God and God is smiling on us. Father, forgive us where we have taken this word lightly. Forgive us where we have kind of underthought like, well, I know it. When really there's so much more to it than we fully understand. But Father, as we approach August, September, October, as a church of believers, we're going to choose to love our enemies, to pray for them, to do good to them, to bless them. Because, Lord, we love life and we want to see good days. We want your face always facing our direction. We want our prayers to be answered and not to be stalled and held back. So, Lord, we're going to practice the royal law. We're going to love our neighbors as ourselves. We're going to love our enemies. We are going to love our enemies. And Father, to do it, we need the grace of God. We need the divine love of God to be released. Help us, Lord, as we practice this. Help us, Lord, as we put this to work. We work it every day. We watch what we say. Put a guard over our mouth, oh God. We watch what we think. We capture every thought, bring it to the, capture every thought, bring it to the subjection to Christ. That, Lord, in these days we'll be watchful about our life and what we put into our hearts, what we let out of our mouth because we choose to live a life of victory and power that we can touch this nation and touch this world with your goodness. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you're here today, there may be things in your heart and life with people, and I know it's not easy. People have been very vengeful to you. People have hurt you. Maybe they've come against you legally. Maybe they have trashed your name, have been spiteful to you, opposed you, and it's not easy. But today, maybe God's just talking to you, just said to let it all go, to let that person go, let those people go. Maybe it's a family. Maybe it's a company. You're going to let it go today. You're going to let it go. In fact, you're going to not only let it go, you're going to love them by praying for them, doing good to them, and for speaking words of blessing. You want their happiness, their prosperity, and their welfare. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, this, these are the days we need to release things to God so God can release what He has in heaven for you. If that's you, you say, yeah, I need to do that. There's some people in my life that that. Raise your hand. Say, that's me. Thank you for those hands, for those honest hands. In Jesus' name, put your hands down. Now, if you're here today and you know you're not right with God, you don't have peace with God, you came with a friend, but you're here today, I promise you this, God's a good God. God is a good God. He doesn't condemn you, but He needs you to understand that you need to do your part. And your part is to reach up to Him and to say, God, I need you. I repent. I'm turning away from things that have pulled me away from you. Today's the day you need to do that. Or if you've never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you came with a friend. I tell you, God loves you so, so much. If you'll just reach up to Him, He'll receive you to Himself. He carried your sins at the cross. He bore your sins. You don't have to carry them anymore. And the greatest love relationship you'll ever experience in your life is when you meet with Jesus and let Him come into your life. So if you're here today, you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? That's what I want. I do need peace with God today. I do want my heart made right with Him. I do want Jesus in my heart. That's you. Raise your hand quickly. Say, that's me. Pastor, pray for me. That's what I want, God. That's what I want in Jesus' name. If you're on the screen watching me, we pray for you that you'd raise your hand right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to pray for, if you raise your hand, just stand quickly, I want to pray for you. If you raise your hand on that first altar call, just slip yourself, just step up. I want to pray for you. Father, I just lift up your H1 standing today. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for the power of the Holy Ghost that's here today to heal their broken heart where it's been hurting that you would touch him with your wonderful love. Father, you love them. Let them receive your love. Let them know that love. And let them believe that that love can not only bring healing, but it can bring freedom for their life. So we release those that have come against us and hurt us. Everybody say this out loud. Say, oh God, I believe your word to be true. And this morning I act upon it. Today I release all those that have come against me. I pray for my enemies. I ask that you would bless them. And set them free from the work of the enemy. But in my heart, I make a shift. I make a change. I not only forgive them, but I will pray for them. I will love them. I will speak good about them. I will walk God's word of love. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Now, at this time, we're going to receive the Holy Communion. If you'd come quickly. If you did not receive a communion cup, please raise your hand. They want to give one to you right now. Hallelujah. And just when you receive it, we'll take it together. Peel back the cellophane and hold the wafer in your hand as preparing to take it. In the name of Jesus. I felt the Lord told me, or impressed, that we have communion often, often during these days, that we allow His presence and the precious blood of Christ to do a work in our inner man. In Jesus' name. Is everyone on the balcony taken care of? 
We have one over here still. Hallelujah. Is everybody ready? Let's partake right now. Father, no, don't partake. Wrong word. Let's pray. <laughs> I misstepped there. Father, I do pray for the, the individual here that's here today that has a wafer in their hand. Lord, we each got different challenges, different struggles, different battles. But Jesus, you're the answer for every one of them. Some of us have physical challenges in our body. I believe, Jesus, you're going to pour out your power today. Some of us have a broken heart because people have hurt us, have come against us, have stepped all over us. God, we're believing that you're going to heal us. Thank you for your willingness to go to that rugged cross to allow your body to be beaten and bruised and to allow your spirit man to take on the weight of the sins of the world. You were made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. You were made sick with our sicknesses. Surely you bore our sickness and you carried our pain on the cross of Jesus Christ. But you bore them so that you can carry them away from our life. Because you love us so much. Thank you for loving us. So today in our wafer hand, this wafer represents your love to us. As we prepare to partake, Lord, we prepare to receive by faith a healing to our lives our bodies, our hearts. Say, I receive healing in Jesus' name. Let's partake. If you peel the foil back. Lord, we thank you for this, the precious blood of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. You eradicated our sins on the cross. You told us, though, our sins be as scarlet, they should be made white as snow. And you remember our sins no more. You absolve us of all guilt, shame, and condemnation. And Lord, when the moment we take this, we're washed clean. And Lord, you told us to judge ourselves and not be judged. So in any way that we have had some things against our enemies, today we forgive them. Today, through a conscious decision, we choose to forgive those that have come against us, that don't like us, that are unfriendly, hostile, maybe even hateful. Now, Lord, we do it not by our own strength, but by your grace. We release that cascading love of God that's in us by the Holy Spirit. Take a minute just to meet with your God and to forgive your enemies. Father, we forgive our enemies. Father, as we part, as part, prepare to partake, we want to go to another level. We will not only just forgive them, we want to love them. We want to bless them. We want to do good to them. We want to speak well of them. Lord, this won't be easy in the natural. It goes against everything in the flesh. But Lord, we're determined to grow in our walk with God and determined to watch our mouths determined to stay in the love lane because that's the life lane that's the blessing lane that's the sickness free lane that's the longevity lane that's the success lane
we receive your cleansing, your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, let's partake. Just keep your eyes closed a minute. I just felt the Holy Spirit say, I'm releasing my power now. I tell you, you teach the word when it's strong, he also does strong things. He'll confirm the word with signs following. If you raise your hands just slightly. Say, Jesus, I receive. I want you to see Jesus coming right by your place. I know he lives within you by the Holy Spirit. But he can manifest himself in other ways. He comes to touch you right now. The power of the Holy Spirit. He's touching you right now. Some of you are feeling him right now. He's touching you. He's healing your heart. He's freeing your mind with one touch of the Master's hand. The Holy Spirit's coming in power. He heals your body. He comes, he comes, he comes. He's touching people all over this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bind every work of hell over your life. I bind every confusing spirit. I bind all spirits of unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. I bind it. I bind it off your life. I break the power of the devil over your life. I bind it. I bind it in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for coming, undoing every work of darkness, healing every heart, letting our minds be freed. In Jesus' name, let your love saturate us. Oh God, let us become inebriated with the love of God. Let us flow in the love of God. Let love be our highest aim, our greatest pursuit in life. Our number one goal above everything we do, that we be people of love. That we walk in love. We'd be kind, patient. Not boastful, not selfish, but unselfish. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your touch upon every believer here, everyone seeking your face, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I said praise the Lord man I feel him today I could minister but the time is short actually it's longer than this oh my goodness I'm turning into an African in Africa the devil services the first service goes right into the second service you don't know where, where you are it's just a continual flow it's not the best for traffic please forgive me and honey did you and I need to take communion together again <laughs> let's all stand to our feet shall we Are you excited? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Outside is the lab. Actually, the lab starts right now. Praise the Lord. And uh, let's just go with the Lord's blessing on upon our life. If you need additional prayer, whatever you need, come forward now. We will pray for you. But if you go out the exit to the left and right, we'd appreciate it. The left and right, and leave this one for the ones coming in. Thank you. God bless you. Be supernaturally Fill with him as you go in Jesus' name. And if you're a first time guest, we're right over here. If you go get out there by the guest center, we want to meet with you and give you a special gift in Jesus' name.